So the blockage can get, um, well, the intestinal wall can become so stretched in that portion where it's blocked that it can burst and it can spill out into your abdominal cavity. Um, that is pretty, pretty scary. And I was this close to having that happen. Um, that's why they actually wanted to life light me <laughs> to, to primary children's because they were so concerned about how close it was to that point, but I refused, so I just rode in the car. So <laughs> it's only three and a half hours, no big deal. Um, but, but yes, it, once it gets to a point, yes, it can become so thin that it, and so distended that it can burst. I'm not exactly sure what happens at that point. I'm sure they just have to go in and do an emergency surgery and clean things out and try and do something. I'm not sure exactly what would have happened. Um, I'm sure that would have made it even harder to repair, I would assume, to repair the intestines and connect them together once they remove the diseased portion. I would assume that would make it even more difficult. But as far as that happening, I don't know how common that is, but I know that most Crohn's patients have I think it was at least two surgeries in their lifetime. So that is pretty common to have surgery. So I've already had one, so I don't want to have another anytime soon because then you're that much closer to the colostomy bag, which is the goal of all of us to not have. So, um, but yeah, I sadly, and it, and it almost was to my detriment, but I have a pretty high pain tolerance. And so I kind of just, I was, just trying to deal with the pain up until that point where it was so distended and so painful. That, and that's why I was so close to having it burst because I could deal with the pain. So that's not smart to do. Just make sure, you know, I, I saw enough doctors and they were trying to hold out for that not to happen, for me not to have surgery, but it was too late and it was a, a better thing in the end to get things on a healthy note and start new. So. I've had many like more small blockages that go away over the years. That one was just so severe that there was no turning back. There was no there was no healing it. It was it was done. But um, but there's different foods that some people some people um, get blockages more easily from. What I've what I've more recently learned. <coughs> is that because of the food you eat, it can make, it can cause the inflammation in your intestines, which is why there becomes this imbalance of the pathogenic bacteria that are seen in Crohn's. So that's what I've recently learned, is um, when you eat foods, like processed foods, you know, unhealthy foods, <clears throat> for people with Crohn's, it causes these bad bacteria in the, in the gut to increase. And those, in turn, they're, you know, what they do is cause inflammation. And so, in order to switch things around, it's really important to be on a good probiotic. That is a huge thing that I wish I had known a long time ago. <laughs> Um, so I'm, I always take a probiotic. I always try and eat, you know, probiotic rich foods like plain Greek yogurt, you know, pickles, all, all those types of fermented type foods that really can help balance the um, stomach bacteria again. Also, um, making sure your diet does not consist of those processed foods and bad foods that cause the inflammation in the first place can really turn things around. So. So recently I learned that and um, a little bit after my Crohn's gastro doctor did the colonoscopy, that was, about, that was about two years ago actually, and put me on those injections again and said, he said that that was in October of two years ago. He said that if things don't turn around, we might have to have surgery again that following summer and that obviously made me worry because I'm young and I don't want to have two surgeries by the time I'm, you know, 25. And so I started doing some more research into more 
natural ways of, of, of healing Crohn's or dealing with it, treating it. And it led me to this other doctor. He's a doctor. He's not a gastroenterologist, but he's just an MD. And he, he specializes in autoimmune conditions and a more natural way of dealing with it. And so he's the one who put me on the low-dose naltrexone medication, and he's the one who's been helping me with, with my vitamin deficiencies, dealing with that, putting me on the probiotic, and testing um, my stool samples to see what types of bacteria are in it, and there were the bad types of bacteria in it. And so he, he's, not, he's not for antibiotics because that can wipe out all the good bacteria, so that can... That can cause more problems with Crohn's disease, but to get rid of those pathogenic types of bacteria, he put me on a very specific type of antibiotic to target those. And since then, I've been doing really well. So I've, I haven't been doing amazing lately with my diet, being a new mom, but, but I really try hard to eat, basically just eat healthier. I honestly believe that eating healthier, following the word of wisdom, <laughs> you know, eating fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, eating things in season, eating just a lot less canned foods, a lot less boxed, you know, processed foods can help any disease. That's what I really believe. And it makes sense. It just makes sense that it would. So that in of itself has made it so I didn't have to have surgery. And my gastroenterologist said I wasn't going to be able to sustain a pregnancy. I had a great pregnancy. It was amazing, and my little boy is healthy as can be. So I'm really grateful to have that knowledge so that I can um, live my life and be healthy and be able to support my family. So it's pretty great. <laughs>